ecosystems and the importance of um, when you're building out a platform business model, then you've got the ecosystem approach. But when you're looking at an ecosystem approach, then you've got issues of security of all of the stakeholders in that ecosystem, access rights management, or that come together. So uh, our next speakers, David Brasley and uh, Rory Blundell from Gravity, will be talking to us about how to manage all of that. And we've got them both joining the stage now. Hey, Rory. Hi. Good to see you. And David's coming <laughs> along as well. Who, hey. Which, hey, David. So which of you will be sharing your screen? David. Okay, great. I will. Jump on it now. Um, Hi, everyone. So great to have the focus on how to unify and manage an ecosystem um, and the technology that goes behind um, working on that. For sure. So. We get on. While well, David's setting up. So you'll, you'll introduce what Gravity is about. Do you want to give us a quick word while David's sure. setting that up? Yeah, right? while David's doing that, I can, uh, I can give a little bit of background on who we are and so Gravity, our focus, um, as we'll sort of touch on a bit later, so we are a holistic API platform. We're not just an API management solution, but we also encompass much more than that. We have <clears throat> the API management solution, but we also have our access management solution. And we also have additional components such as Cockpit and our alerting engine as well. So all of these different Looks like maybe David's had enough. David's got a reboot, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had a call that he has to take. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, so in terms, of, uh, in terms of gravity, yeah, our focus is, is on being that, you know, best of breed, holistic API platform, delivering not only an API gateway and an API management solution, but also the, you know, the full... Um, governance, security, everything that sits around it. And that that really is the subject of today's talk is to try and build upon that and look at where the where the traje trajectory of technologies and the market in general is going and how we can support businesses to really benefit from that moving forwards. I love that. This is one of the strengths of the API Days uh, conferences as we get people like the two of you who've, who know what it's like as businesses are implementing these technologies and building the next generation. And then you come back to our audience and you share, you know, what are the best practices, what people are thinking about in the in the real world right now. So I'll leave you sure. both to it. Thanks. Over to you, David. Thanks, Mark. Okay, so uh, before starting, I would like to thank you, everyone, to attending for this session. So this one uh, will be about the rise of the service management ecosystem and obviously the unification of all those technologies in a secure and governed uh, framework. Uh, before going a bit deeper on this topic, uh, maybe some few words about ourselves. So um, I am uh, David Brassi, and one of the co-founders of the Gravity API platform, and I'm basically the C Chief Technical Officer at Gravity. And for this session, uh, I'm happy to uh, share it with Rory uh, Blunder, who is our Chief Revenue Officer for Gravity. And oh obviously, you can find us uh, to uh, many targets, our websites, Twitter, account, LinkedIn, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So, okay, uh, let's start with a quick overview of the agenda for this talk. Uh, during the first part, uh, we will have a look to what could be the business pains, and we are focusing uh, the biz, biz, those business pains on some concrete feedbacks from our customers. Also, we'll go back a bit uh, to the past and see some scheme about the emergence of the protocols uh, over the last years. Then we'll go through what we are calling the management the service management ecosystem. Oh, it can be beneficial for your consumers, but also for yourself as data or a service owner. And finally, we will see how gravity can help you to leverage the power of your heterogeneous services and data based on this unified service management ecosystem. 
Okay, what about the business pain? From a technical perspective, most people's and products mean REST or SOAP web services when they are talking about APIs. Most of the API gateway and the API management tools just support these technologies. We all know that most of your consumers have a good understanding and are quite uh, fluent with the REST principles, which are considered by most of the people as that de facto standard uh, in the enterprises. It brings them all the simplicity required to consume your services. But now, and um, maybe for a few years, we can see the emergence of new technologies. And it's not just about the technologies themselves, it's also about the evolution of the, you know, of the architectural patterns. Maybe a common example is what the even driven architecture, which can allow you, uh, for example, to track where your parcel is. Uh, even streaming is changing from grown up how applications are built. The, those things are more scalable, more reliable, uh, and also real time based. And in many new, in, in those innovative use cases, uh, there are, and there is no way around using even streaming instead of uh, web services and traditional APIs. And most of the time, our users and customers use Gravity.io for their APIs across the board. But in the other end, they have chosen for tools and like RabbitMQ, like Kafka, as their streaming and messaging platform. And I think you can easily imagine about all the disadvantages of mixing different technologies. And you can ask yourself how you can enable your consumers to quickly and easily consume data from all those technologies without having to redesign everything. And for sure, you can still build specific APIs on top of all those heterogeneous data sources. But what if, if a platform can do it for you in a matter of minutes, in a few clicks, and with just a simple uh, configuration? But now let's go back to the past. You can see and we can see from this picture the rise of the different protocols we are seeing to manage services and data with a very strong acceleration in the 20s. This acceleration is driven by multiple factors. One is the necessity for more real-time and even driven exchanges with messaging system. Another one is driven by the patterns like the microservices and the service meshes. And finally, we could speak a lot about the increasingly massive presence of all the IoT devices now. But if you focus on the 90s to the 2000s, everyone was talking about SOAP and maybe some of us also about the enterprise uh, and EGB uh, been uh, two to uh, two, 20 years ago. And then messaging were, was introduced and new integration pattern were introduced with the help of new types of project like the enterprise service bus. And from this period to today, we've seen an amazing increase of these different protocols. And what it is quite interesting also is that many of those protocols are based on top of the HTTP protocol, like you know, REST, SOAP, GraphQL, gRPC, WebSockets, etc. And these are just following the new capabilities offered by the evolution of the HTTP protocol over the last years. HTTP2 was and it's still an amazing enhancement for all the emerging architecture patterns like microservices and service mesh. And we are now all waiting for the quick protocol on top of the UDP protocol to lay the foundation of the HTTP3. And finally, as we saw just previously, the reason for seeing all these new protocols appear 
is simple. Over the years, many of these protocols were created to respond to the synchronous risk-press response patterns, but also to asynchronous communication using WebSocket, MQTT, maybe server-side event, gRPC, etc., etc. Just to conclude uh, with this slide, uh, it becomes more and more uh, obvious to understand that the arrival of all those new protocols will not slow down in the next years, and that now we will have to support and extend most of them to be as agile as possible and respond to all the new uh, business and technical use cases. Okay, so finally, what's the goal of this unified service management ecosystem? And for us, look, it's quite simple. It's quite simple to understand. We want a platform which provides a consistent, secure, well-defined and discoverable technology agnostic interface. So why not putting all those different standards and definitions we've just seen previously into the same box and just forget about the plumbery? All your consumers know how to call your services and get data on top of the HTTP standard protocols like the REST, GraphQL, GSPC, etc. So let's benefit from them and unify all these technologies. Even better, there are a lot of initiatives in the API area to describe your services. So it's time to use those technologies such as you know, open API or async API to enable an easier discoverability for your consumers. Because we all know that without a simple way for your consumers to discover about your services, there is a great chance for them to not be used. And so you just build the useless services. And the API management platforms and all the API management platforms are providing all the facilities you need to bring this specification through you know, the API portal or, the, or a developer portal. Also, maybe it's worth to say that we don't want to create a new integration platform. It's not the purpose of what we are talking and what we are discussing about. And we want to make our gateway strongly focused on a point-to-point -point communication. And this point-to-point -point communication can be both synchronous and asynchronous to leverage the capability of, of the gateway and the gravity gateway. And just to, just to let you to be able to plug a WebSocket or maybe a gRPC stream con connection to any kind of messaging systems like RabbitMQ, like Kafka, like MQTT. But now, it's time to go further, and maybe you are certainly asking yourself how oh, you can achieve this. You certainly know that the Gravity.io API platform is providing all you are requiring to ensure a great journey with your APIs, your services, and your data. This picture is showing you a common use case about how you can use both the Gravity API management, but also the Gravity access management to manage the heterogeneous backend technologies, whatever it is streaming or messaging like Kafka, or if it's about databases or maybe some MQTT stuff. And the promise here is to give you the capabilities you need to plug all those technologies behind the gateway and ensure that your data and services exposure without the need to build some new API facades or some dedicated backends, which could result in some hero prompts uh, development. It's surely time consuming and may I'm pretty sure about the lower return on investment. And the amazing thing is that this platform is still continuing to provide you with all the benefits from classical API management platform. 
one of the biggest advantage and one of the biggest benefits is that you can still rely on the developer portal to document properly your services, your data, <coughs> uh, your, their uh, format without taking care about the underlying technologies. What about having all those pieces within a centralized place? Another point is about the simplification of client code meaning that rather than having to invoke specific services on top of all those heterogeneous protocols, clients simply talk to the gateway, which is providing the required abstractions. Another point is about, you know, all the security and access control aspects. Having this API gateway will enforce and stem down authentication and security across the board. And again, on top of all those heterogeneous technologies. If a service is exposed uh, to external people, uh, to your partners, you want to authenticate and authorize end users, applications, and users. Or two, OpenID Connect protocols can be used in that case thanks to Gravity API, uh, access management. We can also speak about all the policies which are provided out of the box by Gravity. For example, if you want to define rate limiting restrictions, or maybe if you want to do some uh, transformation stuff uh, on the request or maybe on the response, response payload. One of the maybe exciting thing is also about the analytics and the observability. The service management ecosystem will bring you all the analytics and, and the KPIs you need for your heterogeneous backends, like all the basics, like the number of calls, uh, who are your consumers, who are the end users, maybe what is uh, the most popular product, etc., etc. Finally, uh, it's important to say that Gravity is providing you with all the facilities to deploy a scalable and well-defined platform, thanks to some underlying concepts like sharding tags. It allows you to put and delegate the gateway on top of your heterogeneous technologies following some, some sidecar pattern. You have a new Kafka cluster, no problem. Let's put a gateway on top of it, manage the security, bring the documentation, data representation to your consumers within your API portal, your developer portal. So I think it's um, over to me then. Um, David's obviously got on to do all the interesting bits and he, he leaves me with the, um, <clears throat> with the fun bits about us as a business. So ultimately just a couple of slides really to give you an indication for how gravity can support you on this journey so everything that david has spoken about here in terms of the service management ecosystem and you know providing this centralized unified way of discovering and managing and you know applying security and governance and all these sorts of subjects Ultimately, it all fits within under the banner of what Gravity as an organization wants to be, and we believe we are. And our focus is very strongly upon being the easiest to use, the most performant, and the most cost-effective API platform. So from our perspective, we want to make sure that all of our customers and all of, all of the people that use Gravity, whether it's open source or otherwise um, globally, are getting the best possible platform. OK, they have the, the most amazing experience, the most amazing platform, but they get all of that in the most cost effective way. That's what we want to make sure we continue to deliver. Uh, yeah, next slide, David. So just rounding off some of the points that David made there in terms of how the whole platform sort of fits together and some of the, um, you know, some of the components that we provide as part of the platform or all the components that we provide. Obviously, David's touched on, largely we focused really on the API management component, this bottom left-hand corner. And the service management ecosystem moving forward will form part of that overall platform. So it'll be a framework that really enables you to have that technology agnostic connections 
and provide that security and governance. But the security and governance angle really comes from our OpenID Connect certified elements of the platform, which is access management. So these two in concert really are the core, the absolute engine rooms of the API platform. Now, sitting on top of that, so both of those two things are part of the open source or the community edition. So guys and, you know, everybody on the call, do feel free to go and download it, install it, and, you know, feel free to ask questions at any time if we can help. But ultimately then sitting on top of that is the enterprise edition. Now, Gravity very is very strongly focused on open source. Our ethos is at our heart as an organization is being open source focused. So the enterprise edition, we always want to make sure that our customers and, and anybody that uses the platform really can go into production with clustering, with nice branded portals and all this sort of stuff, just with the, just with the community edition. But the enterprise edition is really there to be able to enhance your experience as an organization. So, for example, if you want to have real-time alerting based upon, for example, let's say there's too many calls taking place or there's some of your APIs aren't performing well enough, you can start building sort of SLA-based reporting, and that's what the alert engine essentially does. With our cockpit feature, this is a big, big feature for us, actually, that we're releasing a lot. Um, and it, there's going to be a lot of releases coming up in the next month or two in relation to this. But the first version of this is about our API designer. And the API designer really touches upon that point about being the easiest to use platform. It enables you to build your open API specification and moving forward to things like async API specification just from a simple mind map. So you'll be able to you draw your mind map and it built, it sort of enforces the open API specification on your users. You can then at one button click install, uh, import that, um, not even import you, just one button click and it builds all of the structure of your API according to your mind map and the Swagger specification and builds all of your mock services and everything. And the top right hand corner, I think is fairly self-explanatory, but that ultimately gives you an indication about how all of the stuff, the interesting stuff that David has spoken about really fits within our ecosystem as a platform and how we can support any people um, and hopefully some of you guys moving forwards. So thanks for your time and would love to hear some questions. I'm not sure if our, uh, <clears throat> if the presenter um, is around at all. <laughs> maybe he's had some, maybe he's had some technical issues. Uh, Mark is joining, yeah, waiting, there right. we go. You're right, I was, I was sitting here press it, pressing the button. Um, great, fantastic presentation from both of you. Thanks for uh, sharing that. Uh, the So far there's not any questions in our chat, can you, with the, are you seeing any particular uh, uh, particular parts of fintech or banking or insurance that is in particular really ready and gets it as far as the opportunities that this sort of ecosystem approach is taking and where it will be solving some of their particular pain points? You talked about some of the business pain points, the challenges of protocol, um, uh, disbursement and therefore the need for a platform agnostic model. What have you got a case? Or have you got an example of a business that you've been speaking speaking to that's like we get this, we need this right now? Sure, yeah, yeah. There's, David sort of alluded to it um, in his presentation. Actually, we so a little earlier in one of the other tracks, um, we had one of our customers tied um, talking actually about their use of gravity and stuff like that. Right. And they very much, you know, understand this ethos and the, uh, you know, understand the the challenges that this sort of stuff that we're talking about here really presents. But a good example, actually, is David sort of alluded to parcels. And maybe not everybody picked up that reference, but ultimately what he's referring to, is we, you know, uh, there's a large postal service um, based in Europe that uses gravity. So that you've chosen... <clears throat> they've chosen gravity as their api management solution and they've chosen in this scenario kafka as their sort of um, event driven um technology technology choice so they've they've got a challenge basically which is and th this isn't unique to them actually we're seeing i was speaking to another um prospect in this case the other day that's an iot based firm dealing with drones and they have you know they 
having a very, in their case, they're using AMQP, so RabbitMQ. But the, the fundamental challenge is similar, which is ultimately because of this rise in the protocols, what that necessarily leads to is a, you know, in the last 10 years, there's been this big push um, towards trying to remove some data silos, trying to, you know, with the concept of data lakes and all this sort of stuff, right? But what these, with the introduction of these new protocols and basically with stuff like different mechanisms of interacting with these different technologies, you necessarily create situations where you have an overly complex architecture potentially and also getting ultimately from a business perspective, what they care about, right, is unleashing the power of the data that resides in those different yeah. technologies. And that's the, that's the fundamental challenge, right, is how do you unleash the power of that data in a secure, governable way, yeah. right, that yeah. makes it everybody easily, can, everybody can easily consume it. And that's the challenge. And that's, that's what we're trying, that, that's what we are solving. Yeah, wow, fantastic. I know, it's sort of like when you taste something and you can, you're trying to figure out What's that flavor coming from? And it's like that in business where it's like, we know the data is in there, but how do we get to it? You know, and how do we use it to move forward? I mean, it's great. Uh, and I think one of the underlying all of this, one of the themes for the conference, I think that's been bubbling up that we've seen in this uh, technology track, yeah, uh, this technical track in, in particular, is that we're at a level of complexity and growth where the only way forward is to have standards and have these sorts of platform agnostic tool or these agnostic tools that enable that growth to continue because you know we're now at that tipping point of complexity where without that yeah. uh, people are going to stumble over themselves and it's going to get increasingly harder so really great for you both to walk us through how the how that how to solve that you know so yeah, fantastic You're welcome. okay thanks i'll let you both leave the stage as we